So we'll quickly go, who, who am I? I got a lot of slides, so I won't spend a lot of time on this one, but I've been working with NSS, which, uh, which is our security library for a long time. I've been working on this code while working for a number of different companies. And I currently in the Red Hat crypto team, which is responsible for pretty much all the crypto in, in Red Hat. Our goals for today is uh, to get a basic understanding of how lattices work. Um, uh, we're going to look at you know some of the pitfalls that uh, you can have with lattice um, and sort of an understanding of sizes. So really what the whole goal is um, to get people as comfortable with lattice understanding how how it works as we are today with RSA, Diffie-Hellman or ECC. Um, I'm not going to dive into uh, all the proofs um, that are associated with lattice. I'm not going to dive into math deeper than what we need to understand lattice, which is basic vectors, matrices, and our simple fields that we're familiar with from RSA and ECC. Um, and I'm, you won't actually get enough to, act, uh, to actually implement the lattice, but you can actually sort of understand how lattices work is the goal. Okay, so how we're gonna do this. Uh, first, I'll tell what they are from about a 10,000 foot level then I'm going to talk about some of the problems that we use, um, uh, the short integer solution. We'll talk about some uh, so, some crypto uh, uh, based on the short integer solution. And then I'm going to get into learning with errors, which is really the part that I think um, uh, you guys are, would, will want to know. The learning with errors is how most of our crypt, uh, lattice works. And um, this is... Uh, this is the part, if you don't get anything else from the talk, uh, how learning with errors work and how we can use them for, for crypto uh, will be uh, the important part. And then as we have time, I'm going to, um, um, we'll talk about three of the uh, NIST lattice-based proposals. I won't talk about uh, um, uh, NTRU uh, because it's a lot more difficult to talk about um, and understand. Um, and then I'll talk about some currently known gotchas, and then we'll take some questions. Okay, so what are lattices? Lattices are basically um, um, a bunch of points in space formed by um, vectors that uh, let's take a set of vectors, and then we create all the points which are linear combination of those vectors. So we have A1 and A2. If you take... Um, a1 here, um, and double it, you'll get this point here. And you take A1, double it, and add A2, you'll get that point. And so you can see all of these points can be created by multiplying a constant by each of these uh, vectors and creating it out. Now, this is a two-dimensional two vectors. Uh, typically, we think about three-dimensional when we think about real-world lattices like crystals and things like that. Um, in crypto, we're going to be talking about very large, like hundreds of um, uh, dimensions. And the bases can be uh, multiple uh, hundreds of vectors. So, so uh, some properties that these lattices have. First, um, more than one set of vector can form the same lattice. So in this previous picture, if I had 2a, um, as my base vector, then uh, multiplying it by one half would give me the same point. Um, so uh, if I take any X number of vectors in a uh, given lattice, that will form that exactly same lattice. Um, there's a number of uh, hard problems uh, that uh, are related to lattices. Uh, short vector problem. So you want to find uh, the shortest vector in the lattice. The closest vector problem, given a, an existing vector, you want to find the vector that's closest to it in the lattice. Um, and uh, the S, uh, SIVP uh, uh, problem, which is we find the basis, so the set of vectors that form the lattice with the shortest set of vectors. Now, we have proofs, and you can kind of get an idea of just looking at this, that 
if you can solve one of these problems, you can solve all of them. But uh, they're believed to be hard. Uh, so one of the things in, in, in security we like to do is we like to prove um, that one hard problem is as hard as another hard problem. And that way we, we know as if, that if you've been pounding on all sides of these problems, that this is probably a hard problem. Uh, so that's sort of our proof in RSA. We don't know RSA isn't breakable, but we do know that if you can break, uh, if you can uh, factor the thing, you can find the, uh, uh, if you can factor your pro, uh, your modulus, you can find the, um, uh, the group size. And if you can find the group size, you can factor the modulus. So we know those are equivalent problems. Okay. Uh, when we represent the lattice, we can represent it as, either as a set of vectors or we can take these vectors, stack them together, and form an array. So the vectors become the columns of the array, and the values of the vectors become the row. And that's the normal way we, we, we will use vec, uh, lattice in, in, in cryptography. Some other things about lattice. Okay, so our, our lattices are usually in these finite fields. That's why there's a discrete number of points in there. Um, there's some differences between the lattice fields and the ones that we use uh, in our normal cryptography. So in Diffie-Hellman, we use a single very large field, and that's the size of whatever our key is going to be. Um, in ECC, we use two points, but the order of the field is much smaller. Um, maybe, uh, you know, uh, 256 bits or, um, uh, or like 64 bytes. Lattices uh, use very large vectors and very large arrays, but the field of each of those are very small. So we're talking two, uh, two and a half byte fields. Okay. So the shortest integer problem. Um, shortest integer uh, problem, we take a bunch of vectors. Um, we find we we want to find the constants we multiply those vectors to come up with zero, and the rule for short uh, short integer problem is that those uh, values we multiply are some in some small set of numbers. In this case, uh, zero or pl and plus or minus one. So we want to find the set of vectors um, that non-trivial vectors. So uh, all zeros obviously multiply by zero. Um, but if you find a, a non-trivial set, or at least one of them is one, um, this problem turns out to be a hard problem. Uh, again, we can uh, write our sets of vectors. Um, uh, we can stack them together and create a matrix A. Um, we can take our problems that were uh, our set of values that we're trying to multiply by, and we form a vector Z. And now this can be written as um, z times a equals zero. And as it can be seen, this uh, uh, this is actually a lattice. If you take um, if you take any z instead of just restricted set, you can see that a times z forms a lattice. And there are proofs that this problem is also yields a solution to the shortest integer problem. You can probably um, uh, divine that um, just looking at it, but there's an actual full proof. Um, so that means we know that shortest integer problem is is one of our hard problems, or the, our other problems are, are 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 not hard anymore. Okay, so how can we use this to create a signature scheme? So we take a secret key uh, t, which is trapdoor function. Uh, that's used to find short vectors. So T would be, say, uh, we create a bunch of uh, short vectors um, to create a, 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 a lattice. And then where the, the, the values in those vectors are, are, are small integers. Um, and then we generate A from it. So remember, multiple, um, we can define multiple uh, 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 lattices with different vectors. So we create larger vectors that are within that T and 
that publish that as A, and A is our public key. So for signing, we can use this set of short vectors. Remember that short ve uh, finding this short set of shortest vectors is a hard problem, but we started knowing what the set of shortest vectors in A are. We can use that to calculate Z, which is sufficiently so uh, short to satisfy A times Z equals the hash of the message. Z becomes our signature. We can verify that we calculated A times Z. Uh, uh, we multiply A times Z, make sure it, it matches the hash. And we verify that Z is sufficiently short. Now, there's some caveats in doing this. Um, as we use sign more and more, Z can uh, provide information for the attacker to figure out T if we're not careful. So we have to there's multiple Z's we can pick, and we have to pick a Z based on a, a distribution that does not tell the attacker anything about Z. Um, big hand wave, but it's there be dragons here, and this is one of the things that, that could trip up a, a lot of space system. Okay. So uh, now we're into learning with uh, errors. So the idea comes from uh, learning systems where uh, you may have noise on your input that you're using to try to train your, your learning system. So unfortunately for learning systems, it's hard to figure out uh, what the original signal is, even if you have a little bit of noise. And so if you have some vector S, you take an arbitrary number of values B and vectors A. So you multiply S times A and you add some air to it and, it, and it produces B. The trick is, can you find the original S given a bunch of A's and B's? That's called the search problem. And can you, uh, the other problem is, can you tick a bunch of A's and B's and determine that there actually is an S back there that's, uh, that will generate them? And that's called the decision problem. And both of these problems are considered hard problems. Now, like the SIS, we can change uh, these vectors um, into matrices. So I can take, um, take a set of uh, AI vectors, stack them together, and it becomes matrix A. I take a set of uh, BI uh, scalars. Um, they become a vector B. So I multiply my vector S times A, add an air vector, and get B. And this is the base learning with air equation, that given this S and A and even just a small e, it's very, er, I'm sorry, given B and A uh, with this small e, it's very hard to uh, come up with S. And in fact, now we have proofs that solving this is just as hard as trying to solve the SIS problem that I presented, which in turn is just as hard as solving any of the matrix these problems. So um, the learning of their problems we now know is as hard as um, uh, the base uh, uh, lattice problems. And it's hard in both um, uh, normal uh, computational uh, work and uh, classical computers and in quantum computers as well. Okay. So how can we use this to do crypto? So I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this slide because this is the basis for all the LWE-based um, algorithms we're going to look at. And so this is where you'll get the intuitive understanding of how LWE works. So we're given A is a trusted uniform array. Uh, uh, array. A is generated by some sort of, uh, if A is generated by some sort of structure, like we did with SIS, where we had a T and generated A, the scheme is not secure uh, because the person who has T can, uh, uh, can uh, solve the SIS problem in that array on you and, and break the, the, the scheme. So it's important that this A is generated in, in some way that we know um, some, someone else doesn't uh, know T. Okay, so Alice generates her R, R vector, which is 
um, the S vector in our, our previous uh, 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 slide. And then she generates an air vector EA. Then she calculates URA plus EA and sends you to Bob. She can now throw away EA. Bob generates S and EB, and he calculates V equals AS. Uh, notice that the S is on the other side because we're doing arrays. Rays are not um, uh, uh, and not commutative like we're, we're used to. So we have to deal with that in, in all of our crypto. Um, Add that air, uh, air vector and sends V to Alice. Alice calculates K equals her R times V, and Bob calculates K equals um, uh, U times S, which is you know, the dot product. Um, so this value is approximately equal to R times A times S, and where they're different is where these errors times your vector, your your public keys are. And if we make the air vector small and the S small, then these two uh, these two things are these two approximately equal things. We can we can uh, correct the error um, by using uh, some error correction schemes. So this is the note. All LWE stuff has some way of being able to correct these particular error operations. Um, so unlike our original ones, that they, they there's not exact numbers, but this is what makes Lattice safe for um, um, for quantum computers while still retaining sort of our Diffie, Diffie Hellman like um, exchange that we're used to. Okay, um, I'm going to go over the next ones. There's a, a fair amount of math in the next couple ones. They're not important, uh, but uh, I'm just going to give you a feel for what we, what some of the things that we're, we do in real life in, in lattice operations. So there are a couple issues we have with the lattice, uh, the classic lattice learning with error issues. One is the array sizes tend to be large. And those vector multiplies, those dot products and uh, vectors times arrays are really expensive to, to do. And so we'd like to be able to um, come up with solutions that uh, don't uh, that uh, don't have such large keys. So one solution is instead of doing a vector times uh, an array, we're going to um, we're going to use um, uh, polynomial math. So you might recall in in um, in the uh, uh, binary forms of ECC, we have this uh, method where we turn numbers into polynomials. You know, polynomials are just you know some x sub variable x x times a2 x squared times a1 if we had another one it'd be x you know ax times a3 or a, ax times x3 so we can map a number into um, a, an actual polynomial here and then we can do polynomial math on it we can multiply them we can um, uh, add them together um, and we can do them in a what's called a ring. We just divide out by something. So the difference between rings and fields is um, a, a math term, but they they look kind of like fields to 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 you, but they're they're not full fields. Um, so our base equation now becomes uh, uh, this uh, b, which is a polynomial. A, which is a, uh, S, which is a polynomial, A, which is a polynomial, and E, our air, which is also a polynomial. So we just multiply S times A doing using a polynomial multiply. We add uh, an air to it, and we get B. And we do all these 
against some ring, which allow keeps when we multiply two polynomials together, we get higher order polynomials. We just uh, do a division that will allow us to uh, uh, to reduce that polynomial back down to the same size. Um, and it turns out that it's very quick to be able to do um, polynomial multiplies if you've done a transform called a Fourier transform um, on these polynomials. So most of the systems do some sort of uh, number or polynomial transform, and we can choose um, Q. So all of the the actual math happens in a full uh, full field. Um, we can that Q of that field makes that transform quick, and I'm going to just hand wave at that. Um, Okay, so here's an example. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this slide, but this is how you do a polynomial multiply. We're doing everything in a field. This case, mod Q equals five. Um, and this is this Q is is actually fairly small. It's actually usually like two to the, uh, something of two to the 12. Um, and then, uh, so we, we have A and B we transform A and B into polynomials. We do standard multiply on those polynomials. Then we divide by our modulus here. Um, and this reduces down here. And all our math, you notice how, you know, four is one. That's because six, that's times three times three is six. Mod five is one. So everything still happens mod whatever the, um, uh, the field is there. Okay, so um, another uh, optimization is when we're doing rings stop uh, uh, implement LWE, um, we call that uh, ring LWE. There is a mapping between re, uh, ring LWE to SIS, but it's only for a special case, so our normal proof doesn't apply. So there's not a, a full mapping between ring LWE and our proof that that our problem is as hard as SIS. So this is a little bit of uh, iffiness in using ring LWEs. Um, module EWE is like ring LWE, except uh, we go back to using um, a vector, which is a single uh, polynomial times an array, which is a list of polynomials. So A becomes an array again, array, but this time the array is an array of polynomials. Uh, and with this, we can get back to something that looks like our full proof. Um, um, and so another optimization, we can generate um, the A, the module, uh, from a seed. So we create uh, a, a, a seed value, and we can generate it by using a standard PRF or... Um, basically a random number generator that's seeded. Um, and uh, when, when we do that, we can get smaller keys because we can just send the seed out and each person calculates the modulus. And two of the NIST finalists uh, use that in their key, uh, module key exchange. Okay. The other uh, sort of refinement is learning with rounding. So rather than creating an air vector, instead we round the coefficients at the bottom of the screen, uh, bottom of the, uh, the, the modulus and send the rounded uh, coefficients in the protocol. So that allows us to shrink the size of the key by a few bits um, and a uh, uh, few bits per uh, entry, which shrinks it actually a fair amount. Um, and it also uh, helps us to uh, handle the air case because when we uh, finish our calculation, we will round out the bottom again and that will um, round out any errors in our, in our, uh, uh, our uh, equation. Okay, so uh, let's see how many of these I can get through. This, we'll, we're going to talk about the NIST, um, actual NIST algorithms that use these things. So uh, first lattice, uh, one of the lattice finalists is called Chrysalis Chris Kyber. 
it's a module LWE and Q is um, uh, 3395 for all of their implementations. Um, this is two to the 12 by, so it's, it's a number that can be reduced mod because it's got a very few, a few twos in it. It's also a number that has two to the eight times uh, a value, which means we can do a very fast number transform on it. The order of the polynomial, this is how many entries in the polynomial uh, there are. So there are two to the uh, 256. So it goes up to X to the 256. There's 256 uh, different uh, uh, values in our polynomial. Eta is how big our air is. And you can see that our air is very small. We don't have to add very much uh, to be secure. So eta is two. So our air values are going to be vectors of zero, one, and two. Um, K depends on the security level. It's the only thing uh, uh, in these parameters that, that depend on the security level. So you can scale this up simply by scaling up uh, K or the number of... Uh, um, uh, uh, and K is the size of the array. So um, Ks tend to be something like two or three. So our vectors and arrays are, are two or three um, polynomials. So the polynomials are large, but there's only uh, um, uh, three by three or uh, four by four or something like that. Okay, so how do we, um, how does it work? Well, we generate a uh, random A, we generate a random S, um, and then we generate an E with the coefficients less than eta. We multiply A times S, um, add our E in, and get our T. This is just like, just looks just like our, um, uh, our standard uh, uh, base, um, lattice equation here. Our public key becomes T and A, and our private key becomes S. Okay, so the encrypt operation, we generate a random R, we generate two random E's, and then we generate um, a U, just like the bob half of our um, Diffie-Hellman exchange. And then um, we do a, something called decompress, which um, shifts the message up uh, out of what we're going to truncate. So we're going we're gonna to do like an LWER, uh, we're going to um, truncate the last several bits in, in our uh, calculations, and that will be our error correction. So to make sure we don't lose any of the message, uh, decompress actually moves uh, the message so that the bottom parts of the message are zero right now. We add that to uh, an error, which is uh, going to, which is fits in that bottom half and is going to disappear. And then we calculate uh, T times R. T was our uh, private key. Transport, it, trans, uh, transpose is what makes everything work as far as... Uh, um, uh, vectors go. Um, and uh, R is what we generated. So T, uh, T to the T R is that K value that we would have um, calculated in the uh, uh, case, in, in the Diffie-Hellman case. And now we send U and we send V and we, are, we compress them, which is drop the, the bits out. Um, so I said decompress and compress basically uh, truncates bits. So there's a little bit of LWER as, uh, in here as well as, or LWR as well as um, your standard LWE going on here. Okay. So de uh, decrypt, we simply uh, decompress those two values that, that came to us. We multiply our uh, pub, uh, private key by u, and that gives us that t value, or gives us that 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 k value from our Diffie-Hellman. We subtract it from v, and that gives us our message, 
except it's got some errors in the bottom and then we can press to shift those errors out and get our original message. Okay, and um, here's the parameter sizes. Um, delta is how, how often this uh, fails. So we're shifting these errors out the bottom. Sometimes the errors become big enough to creep into the main um, uh, message and we will get the wrong message and, and uh, the operation will fail. Um, so we want to make sure these error cases are large enough because too many failures can be used to attack um, uh, a lattice based system. The other thing to see here is the size of our keys. So our uh, public key is uh, around 800 bytes, not bits. So we're looking at roughly eight times RSA here, uh, two to, two to, uh, four to eight times RSA in, in size. So Lattice is larger than any of our others, but they're still small enough to work in our protocols. You can see that, that um, sending uh, 800 bytes or 1500 bytes in most of our protocols is something that's, that they can handle. Okay. We'll go over Sabre very quickly. Sabre is uh, very much like um, our previous one. Q in this case is a binary field instead of a prime field. So just like we have uh, prime versions of ECC and binary versions of ECC, we have prime versions of Lattice and binary versions of that Lattice. Um, P and T are rounding factors basically um, that we use. And we choose them so that um, Q is much larger than P and which is much larger than T. Um, Q and E for all the ones that are defined are, are the same for all the security levels, just like we were talking about in, um, in Kyber. Order is the same as Kyber, 200, uh, 256. L is the length of the vectors. Modulus is L times L, just like K in the Kyber case. And those sizes are pretty much the, the same. We have a constant. Um, uh, uh, we have two constants that are defined here and in a constant vector. These are basically rounding constants. So we add these to the uh, to our operations before we truncate and that causes a rounding. OK, in this case, we generate a seed called a uh, seed a and then a is generated from that seed. So this is our, comp our compression that I talked about before. We generate a random R. We use R to generate S from a binomial distribution. This is to handle our SIS issue we were talking about. I mentioned before, I'm going to hand wave at that some at this point. Um, and here's our basic uh, um, uh, equation, A times S plus H, which functions as the air, equals B. And our public key becomes uh, C, A, and B, and our secret key is S. So we basically do the, the same thing we did before, where we create a uh, B prime. That's the same as a U in the uh, uh, previous case. So we're going to calculate um, V, which is our uh, the same as K in the Diffie-Hellman case, we're going to shift up. This, that's, this is just the math for shifting up, decompressing M, um, add our, um, our rounding factor, and mod P um, uh, reduces it in one step, and then we shift them down um, by P minus T. That's the, the compressed step. So very much like our previous one, except it's depending only on rounding. Decrypt is ex pretty much that same operation. And, uh, and there's the sizes now. So how, are, how is the uh, questions, um, I'm gonna ask Monterey, how's the questions going? Um, are there several questions out there? Because I have about four minutes to 
Okay, hearing nothing from the moderator, I'm going to just keep uh, plowing on. Um, I'm not going to go over the details of the, uh, the lithium because we're, we're running out of time. Um, but I will go on how it, basically how it works. So we do the same type of generation. This looks very familiar. S has to be also below our eta value, the size of... Um, so S is, are also very small in our signing operations here. Um, the way we sign, we generate a random I with small coefficients. We multiply uh, 8 times Y, and then we take only the high bits. This value just simply says how many high bits to take, and that's W. We create a ha uh, hash value, uh, find C. C has to have a few, very few bits, and if it doesn't, we, we go back and find a new Y. Once we find C with the very few bits, we now calculate Z, which is our Y value that we chose times plus our, the hash times the uh, uh, private key, and that's Z. We check to see that Z is uh, small enough to meet our requirements and that the low bits of uh, AY minus CE is small enough to make sure things don't overflow. And if either of those cases aren't true, we set Z to invalid and we loop through this again. And once we've got a Z that meets all these requirements and a C, we go to the next, uh, we return those as our signature. And to sign, we simply calculate C times the public key, uh, the, uh, the T from the public key, Z times uh, the array, take the high bits, that's W prime, that should equal W, and we recalculate C based on the hash of the M uh, board with uh, uh, R, R W prime, and these should be valid, and Z should be smaller than, uh, Z should have be smaller than uh, our, our threshold. Um, yeah, that's why it works. <laughs> um, and optimization sizes. Okay, and um, we want to avoid decryption errors. Uh, so, so one of the gotchas. Okay, so we want to uh, avoid decryption errors because this acts as an oracle. Think RSA Bleckenbacher uh, for Lattice. We need to uh, make sure A is generated properly. Think uh, PQG generation or the bad primes uh, from Diffie-Hellman or uh, DSA. Um, when using SIS, we need to make sure that Q is out of a uh, proper random distribution. Think properly choosing K when we're doing DSA and EC-DSA signatures. We need to avoid side channels just like we had to do before. And then we need to keep our eyes out for new attacks. Uh -huh. Lattices prevent... Uh, 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 sorry to interrupt you, uh, We have uh, one question in the chat. Uh, okay. uh, I will read it. Okay. Okay. So, is is lattice based crypto okay. considered resistant against quantum computers? If so, then why exactly uh, are the computations so much harder than in uh, ECC? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the whole purpose of lattice is to be. Um, uh, secure against quantum computers. That's why we're interested in them. Um, and that's why we're willing to take on these complexities over ECC and larger key sizes in ECC and RSA in, in any case. Um, the interest of, of Lattice is it's one, it's one of the smallest and fastest of the uh, uh, quantum secure algorithms that we have. 